Today I show you how you can shock the WD elements, Western Digital Elements external hard drive to extract the white label hard disk from inside. This you might want to do if you have a NAS station, a NAS computer and you want to buy cheap drives. Usually these Western Digital Elements or the Western Digital My Book and Seagate also they have really good offers for uh, the holidays and throughout the year and when you can buy them cheap usually these are cheaper than uh, the single drive which is a bare drive so you might want to do this you buy the external drive and extract the hard disk from within to use it in your computer or in a NAS station NAS computer this might void your warranty or not, depending where you live. So be mindful of that. And opening the case is a bit difficult. There are four clips on the back of the hard disk and they are not equally spaced, so you might break a few. But uh, I use a plastic tools but this metal one really works pretty well if you have multiple prying tools it's always good idea it's all a good idea to use multiple ones just to keep the clips open the thing you want is to keep all the clips open and then slide the hard drive out of the cage after out of the case and it just comes out like you will see now if you break uh, the clips it's a, not a big deal, especially since if, if you don't care about warranty. This drive actually it wasn't new, I used it f about two years, I think it has three years warranty, but I'm not sure. Yeah, now it's out, that's, uh, that's really use a few clips it will open eventually and it doesn't really matter if you keep it upside down or with the feet up or down it doesn't really matter the clips are more or less in the same positions this is the western digital 14 terabyte white label drive inside those are the rails for the case and you see the clips there yeah, these are the these are the clips, and they are not equally spaced left and right. You see I the position. One. I broke one there. I really believe they they try their best to make it so as soon as you try to open a case like this, it breaks the clips. But it's always really. Um, I mean, I I opened another one before, and I also broke a clip. You might be able to do it without breaking the clips, especially if you don't slide the prank tool where the clips are. If you do it like this and I put it under it and then when I open, it breaks it. So yeah, the rails, you can see the rails of the hard drive, it's both sides, top and bottom, left and right. It's how it slides the, the caddy of the drive slides in. 14 terabytes. WD 140 EMFZ. This is a helium drive. It's nice and quiet, 5400 5, RPM. I got a new one for 18 terabyte, and this one, that one is 7200 RPM, and it's not helium, and well, it is helium, but it's a bit noisier. The vibrations are stronger. The 5400 rpm drives are nicer for quiet and cooler operation also but they have lower transfer speeds to remove the drive from the case you see those corner rubber grommets and if you ever want to put it back you should take a picture or save a link to this video um, the position of these rubber grommets it's a bit difficult, they really make it a bit difficult. The WD My Book is much easier to open. The elements is uh, it's a bit of a nightmare, actually. This is the light guide for the LED. It will 
basically guide the light from the LED inside of the board to the external case. You press the disc out. I don't think it really matters which side you press it out. But if you see one side doesn't work well, just do it this way. It's better to press on the side that the board is not on, where the ports are, the opposite of where the ports are. And that for sure makes it easier to open it. That's really useless now. You could put another drive inside it, but you have to be careful. The shape of these grommets is only made to work with this shape of this drive. I have another drive, 18, 8 terabyte, another one. It has a different shape, so I actually had to cut these grommets to make it fit, and it didn't really fit great eventually. It was enough to be able to insert it in the case. So, yeah, they, they changed the shape of these drives, the corners. Some, this newer drive, the corners are shallower. On the older drive, on the 8 terabyte drive, they were a bit thicker. I guess they, they optimized the size of the drives. Removing these grommets, all these parts from the case, you should keep them. Screws, one screw there, one below also. It's just a regular Phillips head screw. Nothing special there. Keep the screws. You might want to use the case with another drive. A Western Digital drive or another drive. I will show you in a moment how you could use it with other brands of drives. The nice thing is that this board connects to SATA. So now you have the drive ready. And this board you could use it for any really Western Digital or non-Western Digital drive and you have a converter to USB. If you have a drive that is not Western Digital, you have to disable pin 8 and 7 and 8 on the Windbond chip. That's the Windbond chip. It's the Windbond chip because it's written Windbond on it. That's pin 8 and 7. So from the circle where is a dot, it's pin 1 and you count around and it's 7 and 8. I will put a link in the description or let me know in the comments below if you want to know more about that. If you have a Western Digital drive, it doesn't matter, no need to do that. This is the nice Western Digital white label drive, 14 terabyte internal use hard drive. So that's what I'm going to do. I will put it in the computer and use it there. SATA port, power port. That's where you put the tape if you need to do the 3.3 volt mod. Some of these hard drives, they don't start unless you tape those pins. It depends on the power supply you have and also there is a way to use an adapter from the SATA connection, power connection. Uh, I don't know why they had to do this. I guess it was to prevent people from using them in uh, computers in a normal power supply, but okay, there's always a way. So when you're done, you insert the hard drive into your computer, regular SATA port and regular SATA SATA data port and SATA power and that's all. Thanks for watching.